Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Steel City Underground podcast. This is What the Football WTF Week 13. My name is Terry Fletcher. So I think I'm going to save the Steelers rant or the WTF Steelers game until the end, only because I know that Joe and Brian probably gave you an earful already, as well did most of the media people. It's amazing to me how we can't get any love. We can't get any even night games, primetime games, but as soon as we lose one, especially to a team that was coming into it three and seven, uh, or I should say four and seven, we are definitely getting barbecued. So uh, what what can we say? You know, I think the monkey's off our back. Uh, the good thing is that we're still the first seed because in the AFC, because when you look at the Chiefs, they are also 11 and one, but they lost to the Raiders who are in their AFC division. And so for us, meaning the Steelers, and I, yes, I do say us. I know Joe hates it when I say that, but they're, they're my team. They're our team. They're us. We're one of them. Um, we lost to an NFC team. And so I don't want to minimize the loss, but it can be because it doesn't affect us moving forward. It only affects now we've got to get focused. So let's see what's happening around the league from a what the football perspective. I'm going to kind of move backwards because the last game that we all watched was the Ravens Cowboys. And yes, on a Tuesday, because let's face it, Captain COVID strikes again and everything had to be moved. And speaking of that, in this game, the Ravens were playing the Cowboys and they did beat them 34-7. We, we knew they would because the Cowboys are a mess right now. But here's the sad note on that. And I actually feel for Des Bryant. So for those of you that are new to football, if you are, Des Bryant's a wide receiver who used to play for the Cowboys and actually a decorated or I should say a celebrated uh, wide receiver for them as well. Well, as he's warming up, they tested him apparently for COVID and it came back positive. He had a test earlier in the week and it was inconclusive. So he's actually on the field warming up and they pulled him 10 minutes before game start and said, you don't get to play. Okay, so who did Jerry Jones uh, get a favor from? (laughs) I'm thinking this is just rude. And so, of course, Dez went on to Twitter to complain about it. And basically he said last night late, you know, I'm done. I don't need this nonsense. So we'll see if that's actually true. It could have just been a rant where he was frustrated and ready to play and uh, couldn't. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, the Ravens did win moving them into seven and five, but because they are not going to win our division, I don't really care if they win. So we're going to move on from that. The Browns Titans, you know, let's talk about the Browns AFC. They are actually second place and they did beat the Titans 41-35. They had a ridiculously high scoring first uh, half of 38 points. But what nobody's talking about as they're ready to anoint the Browns as, oh, they're going to go to the Super Bowl. Come on, people. They're the Browns. But in the second half, they only scored three points. You're not going to get there that way. So, you know, yes, they had a fluky first half and the Titans were asleep. But then the Titans came back and scored 35 points. So let's let's look at the whole game before we start, you know, saying that that uh, that team is the one to really look out for. Now, the Raiders Jets. Oh, my gosh. How many of you are watching that game? Well, here's the weird thing on that. And I'm sitting here watching this game and I'm like, wow, the Jets are actually going to win one this season. They're Owen, we're Owen 11 going into that game. And then with what, less than 10 seconds left, Derek Carr throws what he should as a Hail Mary into the end zone and the Jets blitz. I'm like, why don't you have people back there? There is one player back there, one defender, and he overthrew the guy. And so I'm like, okay, hopefully the the you know OC uh, sees that on the jet side and says, just everybody go back into the end zone. Nope. He let Derek Carr have another shot at it. And the guy just walks in for a touchdown. He just grabs it and says touchdown. So they win 31-28. Well, guess what? That gets your offensive coordinator fired. I can't believe Gay still has a job. But if there was a what the football moment in any of the games this weekend, the Raiders Jets was that moment. And of course, they're talking about how great Derek Carr did. The Raiders played terrible all game. But when you make a mistake like that, with the Jets, I mean, they're now 0-12. 
I don't know what's going on there. So I think they were just trying to solidify that they're going to get the first round pick in the draft. But oh my gosh, it makes me really believe that I should be applying for offensive coordinator jobs. Because when you see things like that, you're just like, seriously, WTF people, I just don't understand it. So I feel bad for the Texans because I love JJ Watt. Everybody loves a Watt. But the Colts lost 26, or I'm sorry, the, the Texans lost 26 to 20 because of a bad snap at the in the red zone. And the Colts jumped on it. And it was it was bad. And so that's how they ended up winning. I mean, they were ready to score. And it was just bad. So the Texans bad luck. And I'm not really sure what's going on with, you know, their quarterback over there. So because he's playing a decent game, but it's it's pretty, pretty sad. So the Saints, I actually would be a little bit nervous if I was, you know, 42 year old Drew Brees, because I don't know if you're realizing this, but here's a good, a positive WTF for that team. And they right now have Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill as their quarterback. You know, they are 8-0. Remember Teddy Bridgewater when, uh, when Drew Brees was out last year? They're 8-0 when Drew Brees is injured. Who else can say that? I know we can't when Ben's injured, and so the Steelers can't, but it's just interesting to me to see how proficient they are when um, Breeze is out. And I'd be worried if I was him, but they won their game against the Falcons. I don't ever want to hear anybody call Matty Ice Matty Ice again. It's Matty overpaid because he's just, Mike Ryan is just an overpaid quarterback on the Falcons who isn't really getting things done. But let's face it, Taysom Hill, you know, 27 for 37, 232 yards, two touchdowns. And he rushed 83 yards as well for 14 attempts. So he is that, I think he's going to be their quarterback of the future. There's a lot of confidence there. Saints 10 and 2, and they clinched a playoff spot. Upset of the week. And actually, you know, I, I don't want any team to feel bad, especially because the, you know, the NFC doesn't matter to anybody who's an AFC team because you just want to know who you're playing in the Super Bowl, right? Well, the Giants and the Seahawks played and the Seahawks went in uh, eight and three and they're now eight and four and the New York Giants have won four games in a row first time since 2016 and they beat the Seahawks 17-12 with their backup quarterback Colt McCoy so Russell Wilson could not get it done he's there stopped talking about him as the MVP of the league and or at least he's been moved down to maybe number five but that was the upset of the week that was definitely a what the football you're like wow Seattle lost to them and I think that yes we're I'm going to cut to the Steelers and we're probably one of them as well. But because everybody keeps saying we're just a terrible 11-0 team, now 11-1 and team, I mean, it doesn't seem like anyone was really surprised. Every week, everybody's been waiting for us to, to kind of tank. So let's move on to Patriots Chargers if we really have to. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. 45-0. That is enough said. Patriots are coming straight forward. They're trying to do something in their uh, AFC East area, but six and six now and Chargers, I don't know what you're going to do, but three and nine, you all but kicked yourself out of any kind of playoff contention. Now, what everybody isn't talking about, and this is where it's really kits to me, and that is, you know, in the last five games, the Steelers have actually scored against their opponents 60 more points than they have. But the Chiefs in their last five games have only scored under, and each game, they're only winning under six points. And so they've scored maybe, maybe around, I think, 18 points I counted. So they're not blowing out teams like everybody says that they were. They are winning as we were, as we have been winning, except for one game. But remember, we are still, and I keep saying we, I know I know I'm not supposed to say that, but the Steelers are still number one, because again, the Chiefs lost to the to the uh, Raiders, and that's their division rival. So right now, we're still on top of things. But yes, Chiefs did beat the Broncos, which actually, and it wasn't a blowout, it was actually a really good game. And the Chiefs were not ahead until the second half. And it was 22 16. So the other uh, interesting WTF, and I, you know, when, when you see these big contracts, like with Matt Ryan, and, you know, just some of these quarterbacks, you're just like, why are you paying this much money for somebody who truly only had one good season, but then maybe failed when it came to, um, you know, the Super Bowl? Look what Matt Ryan did in the Super Bowl that one year. But Carson Wentz, $128 million man, and he has been benched. 
in the halfway through the Green Bay Eagles game, Green Bay won 13 16, but they put in Jalen Hurts, you know, their, their next man up quarterback. And it's just interesting to me that you sit there and you have an over $100 million quarterback and you're benching him. If there isn't a WTF moment, I don't know what is. All right, let's get to the Steelers game. I've been wanting to talk about this since it happened, and I actually needed that 24-hour period because I was not happy. First of all, one of the things that is really bothering me is how nobody's talking about how great Ben Roethlisberger is playing. If you have drops, those are catchable balls for the most part. I'm not saying that some of them may not be maybe a little contested, but when they're drops, it means that they touched the hands or went through the hands or should have been caught balls, meaning that Ben is throwing them where they need to be. And so talk about a WTF. It was one of the worst games from Eric Ebron and Deontay Johnson. And I don't care if you keep, you know, pointing to your chest and saying, my bad, my bad. Yes, you're bad. And in the quote from Tomlin, he's basically said, if you can't catch the ball or they, then they'll be replaced with those who will catch the ball. And he means it. That is not a coach who is just talking to talk. And also, you know, if you can't get a yard, you don't deserve to win. And he said in this game, and I agree with him. Remember, you have to earn the right to go for it on fourth and one when that happens. But when you say that, look at all the ways they tried to get that yard. I mean, why are we throwing in, you know, Gerald Hawkins, an eligible tackle to get a yard? They don't have hands. Why don't we do a quarterback sneak? Why aren't we at least passing one or why aren't we running it until we can just, you know, move it in? Why aren't we pushing that running back in there? Even try a wildcat something on the one yard line. But to start doing this trickeration, as they call it, that that's just stupid. That makes no sense to me. And no matter if you're a winning team or not, Randy Fickner is not the answer. He's not making good decisions. And I'm sitting here thinking you should just give it to Ben to figure it out. But this is just ridiculous. Five times for one yard and we can't get it. That, that is absolutely ridiculous. But all the drops, I mean, you can't jump off your couch enough for those drops. And I don't know who was screaming at the game, but I was tired of hearing them screaming in the background. I don't know if you could hear that, but if you're going to get the privilege of being one of some of the only people who are allowed at Heinz Field now, and you're a family member, I'm sorry, but shut up. <laughs> you need to not be screaming or screeching in the background. You need to be cheering. And it's just, I know you can hear yourself on TV, but it's, it's really not cool. So what was the biggest WTF moment for everyone? Oh, yeah. The administrative timeout at halftime. What the football was that? And I'm being kind here. So basically what happened is that Washington had no more time, no more timeouts left. And there was eight seconds left on the clock. Alex took the ball with him when he was tackled, when he went down. I, I don't even remember if he was sacked or not, but he went down, takes the ball off the field with him. So now they, uh, the refs have to find a ball to kick it. And they stop the clock to find a ball. No, 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 no. That should have been delay of game. And Tomlin was clear they were wrong. And he even said in his press conference that he had to explain to them why that was wrong. But it was just ridiculous that, you know, they were they allowed that to happen. Then they went in at halftime, you know, with three points. It still should have been 14-0. And the fact that they allowed that to happen is just ridiculous. But let's look at some of the, and also remember, there's no prize for being undefeated. You know, Ben said, we're not here for perfection. We're here for Lombardi's. So again, NFC team loss. Hopefully this will get some of the guys heads out of their butts to catch the ball. And I'm hoping that we see more long passes to Juju. Juju is that reliable, that reliable wide receiver. He fights for every inch and he catches the ball. Rarely do you see Juju Smith-Schuster drop it. And so I'm not sure why Ben is always targeting Deontay, always targeting Ebron when they're not catching the ball. Two games in a row now. Yes, I'm ranting, but that really bothers me when I see all of those drops. And Ben is trying to take the responsibility for it, and it's not his fault. He is playing great football right now, and I, I just wish that Mike Tomlin would also acknowledge that. But remember, we didn't have a victory Monday, but let's take some positives away because one thing that was hard for me was to root against Washington. Now, I'm always going to root against a team when they're playing my Steelers. I'm, I'm always going to do that. But this kid, Alex Smith, 17 surgeries, 17, surviving the number one pass rush in the NFL for the win. 
I mean, good for him. I I really am surprised. It should have only, it shouldn't have been 23-17, 20-17. And if we actually caught the ball, we should have had at least 30 points. But that, yeah, the administrative field goal doesn't count for me. But I mean, WTF that he's even in a game right now. The fact that he almost lost his leg. So kudos to, to Alex Smith for what he did out there. And we also had a ton of injuries between... Spillane going down, Hayden in the concussion protocol. Remember, James Conner's out uh, for COVID. He's my fantasy running back, so believe me, I know. And then also Pouncey was out. So <laughs> that one call where <laughs> the uh, the ref says offsides or, or what is it? No, false start. I'm sorry, the other side. False start, everyone but the center. Yeah, when your center forgets to snap the ball, you just know that that's the way your game is going to go. So even though he's new to the game right now and he's filling in for Pouncey, yeah, that was kind of our game uh, going into that, going into the uh, the next week. And now we have another short week. So we are eleven and one. Uh, to me, I think that having another short week, we play you know five days, and the Steelers are playing Buffalo, who they won a very hard game, and we are going to have our hands full. So let's hope that everyone's going to get focused. Let's hope that uh, Tomlin basically gets in everyone's faces and that those receivers who are targeted since apparently we want Ben throwing 50 plus passes a game, those receivers need to catch the ball. And if they're not going to catch the ball, then like he said, you're not going to have an opportunity to catch the ball. And so let, let's get it together, guys. We need to. So thank you for listening to week 13 of the WTF podcast. And until next week to have a great week, you guys. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.